Hi, I'm Kayla from Love of Diving Productions. Today I'm here at Dan's Dive Shop with Chris. Dan's Dive Shop has been in the business for 47 years and is a go-to destination for underwater explorers. Thank you very much for the introduction, Kayla. Um, as mentioned, my name is Chris. I'm here today to help you pick the uh, right dry suit for you. Uh, one of the most important things we need to consider, though, before we pick what suit is best for you is what type of diving are you going to be doing? So next spring, me and my mentor Jill Heinrich are going to be going up to the St. Lawrence River on an expedition in order to gather content to create giant floor maps. These floor maps will be used to educate children across Canada. Awesome. Now in the St. Lawrence, where the St. Lawrence River meets the Saguenay River, mm -hmm. the water is extremely cold and usually hovers around the freezing point. Awesome, very cool. So it does def definitely sound like you're going to be, uh, you need a dry suit to help keep warm in those types of conditions. Can you let me know a little bit more about the type of diving you'll be doing on that expedition? Do you expect to be more mid-water? Do you expect to be uh, working in the suit, like um, close to the ground, possibly with some abrasion resist, uh, mm -hmm. abrasion against the suit? Um, if you can fill me in with a little bit more details, that'd be great. There's definitely going to be a bit more working dives on this mm -hmm. and mid-water, so... Mm -hmm. And I think there also will be some shore diving as well, so we're going to need a suit that's very rough and durable. Perfect. Um, perfect. That's all great information. Um, have you ever dove in a dry suit before? Yes, I've actually been diving in a dry suit for over eight years now, and, but however, mine's getting a bit worn, so I'm looking to upgrade. Do you have any recommendations on what I should choose? Sure, of course. So in um, the modern era right now, if you're looking at dry suits, the main two materials you're going to see suits can be uh, made of is going to be a trilaminate style material, or some of the older generations will use a crushed neoprene. Now there are differences between these materials. Crushed neoprene does add a little bit of warmth on its own, and crushed neoprene was a lot popular, a lot more popular before modern dry suit undergarments became as uh, well insulating as they are now. So back then divers would use their suit to get a lot of their warmth, and they would just add some additional layers. Nowadays, because dry suit underwear itself is a lot warmer and a lot better designed, a lot of dry suit manufacturers are going with a trilaminate style material. These are a lot more lightweight. They can be more durable and they also dry a lot quicker. The benefit to this is you're going to get all of your warmth from your undergarment so these suits can be used in both warm or cold water because you can layer the exposure protection to fit your diving needs. When you're looking at suits there are different features um, that you want to pay attention to as well. Uh, one of the most important ones is the seals that the suit's going to have. So um, both Crushed neoprene or trilaminate suits can have glued on seals like you see here. A lot of times these are made of latex, whereas some of the more new modern suits are going to have what's called user changeable seals. So the fourth element suit here, for example, uses what they call their ellipse system. So this hard ring will pop out. And if I was on a dive site and I was to accidentally rip this seal, if I have an extra seal in my toolbox, I can swap it out and I can still get in for the dive. Whereas when you have these glued on seals, unfortunately, if you were to rip this, you're going to have to send it away to a repair facility and it's going to take a long time before you can actually get back into the water. Now you've also got, for the neck seals, sometimes you'll see neoprene seals. Um, neoprene seals are uh, thicker. Um, they are a little bit more durable, but they do require a bit more maintenance as well. Neoprene seals can rip um, like this, and again, it's kind of one of the older generations. Nowadays, you'll see most wrist or neck seals are going to be made of either latex or silicone. One of the benefits to latex compared to silicone is latex is a bit more rigid. It's also a bit more of a matte finish, so it's not as sticky. So if you are rubbing against the dirt, um, it's not going to stick to the seal as much. Silicone seals um, can be kind of sticky, so if you rub it along the bottom um, of, the, of the parking lot as you're getting dressed into your suit, you can get dirt and debris to stick to the seal, which, which uh, takes a bit more... Uh, care to clean it off to make sure you don't accidentally damage the seal. But one benefit to a silicone seal is it's not going to degrade over time. Latex seals, for example, are usually only good for about three to four years. And no matter what, UV exposure is going to start to degrade the silicone or the latex and it's going to start to fall apart. A silicone seal, if perfectly maintained, should last you significantly longer. So a lot of new suits will start to come with silicone seals for both the neck and the wrists. When you're looking at suits, you can also look at the different types of zippers. Some of the older suits would come with the heavy-duty brass zippers. The fun fact about these is these brass zippers are actually the same type of zippers that were used on the first generation of um, NASA spacesuits. Um, nowadays you are getting a lot of brands that are going with plastic zippers like this. Very similar to how latex and silicone has the pros and cons for durability and maintenance, a brass zipper is a more durable zipper if perfectly maintained, but they do require lubrication after almost every dive and you have to be very careful about not bending or breaking the spine. Plastic zippers are more lightweight, they require significantly less, more, less maintenance, they are a lot more flexible, but they do technically have a shorter lifespan. Um, however, most divers would damage a brass zipper before it got to its full 
life expectancy, so therefore a lot of brands are starting to switch to using plastic zippers for their main uh, waterproof zipper. When you're looking at suits, there's other things to consider, such as um, uh, utility. So um, a lot of dry suits nowadays will come with pockets. Some suits are going to come standard with pockets. Some suits are going to come uh, are going to add pockets as an addition. But there are uh, definitely different options to make sure that your suit is ideal for working conditions as well. Um, when you're looking at suits, there's also different options for boots. So some suits are going to have integrated boots like this, whereas other suits are going to have what's called a soft sock. So you've got a uh, waterproof sock that goes over your feet, and then you would wear an external rock boot um, over top of this. This is, again, um, a nice option for the working um, professional because as you wear out your the sole of your boots, you can replace the outer boot without having to send your suit away to get the entire integrated boot replaced. Um, so there are a lot of different options when you're looking at the different types of suits, but nowadays most brands will start to lean towards tri-laminate style suits. Wow Chris, that was just a ton of information. So it definitely seems that tri-laminate's the way to go, but what exactly is a tri-laminate dry suit? Sure, of course. So the tri-laminate material, the simplest definition of it is uh, three layers of material overlapping each other glued together. So trilaminate suits for the most part can be made of either nylon or polyester. There are pros and cons to each of these materials. Some suits are going to be more flexible than others. Some are going to have higher durability than others. Some are going to have better breathability for on the surface. But at the end of the day, all of them are waterproof, which helps give you uh, to help keep you dry, uh, which is the most important part of a dry suit. Um, some suits, like the Fourth Element Argonaut 2.0 here, actually can come in a hybrid combination. So this can use a nylon uh, torso, which is the more durable version of the trilaminate material, but they'll use the polyester material for the lower half, which gives you more flexibility in the legs when swimming. So there is different pros and cons to the different materials, but some suits, like the Argonaut 2.0 from Fourth Element, use a hybrid to help give you the best of both worlds to help make um, the most flexible and durable suit that you can have for the type of diving you're going to be doing. That sounds like a very cool suit, but however it doesn't seem to offer you much warmth in it. What type of undergarments would I need to wear with the suit? Correct, so as I mentioned, yeah, like and just like you just said, um, the trilaminate suits do not give you any sort of warmth, so it's really important to have proper dry suit undergarments. Oftentimes when dry suit diving, first off you're going to start with what's called a base layer. Base layers can either be made of fleece or they can be made of other uh, materials that help just kind of wick moisture away from the body and kind of help um, give you a, a layer of comfort. This is the fourth element zero therm, which is made of fleece, so it does help give you a, a bit of warmth. When dry suit diving, also sometimes divers will add a mid layer. A mid layer would be a good example of uh, something like the fourth element X core vest. So this adds another thick panel of fleece, which helps give you some additional insulation on the core, which is um, helping keep the blood pumping through your body quite warm. And then after this, divers will then switch to a full undersuit. So at the end of the day, a diver will actually get the majority of their warmth from their main undersuit. So your main undersuit will often have some different design features that aren't included in something as simple as a base layer. Looking at the fourth element Halo 3D as an example, this undersuit um, is a one-piece suit and it uses thick fleece panels on the back, just like you find in something like the X-Core vest, but at the front they use a Space Tech compression resistant material. So this material is important because when you're in a dry suit and you're diving in trim, all of the air in your suit is going to flood to is going to move up to the back. So the front of the suit fits very tight. Now a dry suit is using that air as an insulative layer to help keep you warm. So it's important to make sure you still have a small layer of air around your body. This Space Tech compression resistant material is going to help keep a thin layer of air um, around your core as well as around the legs, mm -hmm. helping keep you um, significantly warmer. So usually the best way to keep yourself warm in very cold water conditions is to use a three layer system like this. You can use a base layer, a vest as a mid layer, and then your full one piece suit. And the beauty of dry suit diving in a tri laminate suit is if you do eventually move to warmer environments and you still want to wear your dry suit, you can just thin up the layers that you're wearing to um, balance the thermal characteristics of the suit to match the environment you're diving in. Thank you, Chris. That answered both my questions about the tri laminate suit and the undergarments. So it seems like the next thing we need to do is figure out what size I need for a dry suit. However, as a woman, I found that any dry suit I tried on doesn't really fit me because they have been made for men. So what would you recommend to solve this problem? Sure. So um, 
a lot of dry suit manufacturers will make suits in both men's and women's sizing. Um, they will often come in either select sizing, which is pre-made sizes, or some brands will actually offer a made-to-measure suit. The downside to uh, stock sizing is it will fit most people, but oftentimes people will find it to be a little long either in the arms or the legs, or there's just some minor adjustments that um, make the suit just not really fit perfect. So a lot of people will often upgrade to a made-to-measure suit. Depending on the brand you're looking at, brands like DUI and Santee, um, for their made-to-measure suits, we'll take uh, a combination of around 18 to 24 different measurements to then um, adjust their cut pattern to make you a made-to-measure suit. Mm -hmm. Some brands like Fourth Element are actually approaching this in a different way. These guys are now using what they call their biomap system. So using a digital algorithm and analyzing photos, we would actually take two photos of you in a base layer, send it to Fourth Element, they would then analyze those photos to be able to make you a um, custom made-to-measure dry suit. So the benefit of the biomap system compared to something like these, uh, these types of suits where you have to do manual measurements require you finding someone that is experienced in doing dry suit measurements, and there is always uh, a chance of um, human error in those measurements. Whereas using photos of you and having a digital algorithm, Fourth Element finds this to be a lot more accurate. Thank you, Chris. That gave me all the information I need to choose a dry suit. And based on what you said, I think I'm going to go with a tri dry suit. And it seems that for me, the best brand would be a fourth element dry suit. It'll, it will offer me the durability at the top and the flexibility on the bottom. And along with all these extra undergar undergarments for warmth, mm -hmm. I think this will be a perfect suit for me. Correct. And I agree. And I think, uh, especially since you were having some sizing issues with your last suit, I believe the fourth element biomap system is going to help make you the best made-to-measure suit as well. Okay. Great. So why don't we go and get the mapped up now? Perfect. more about how the biomapping process actually works. Sure, of course. So now that we've decided we're going to go with the fourth element, so the next step is to take your biomap photo. So as I've already talked about, there, we're going to be taking two photos that fourth element is going to be analyzing to get your measurements. One of the first things we're going to be doing is we're going to be throwing you into a fourth element J2 mm -hmm. base layer. A uh, really important fact uh, for these photos is we need to make sure that there's a good contrast to the curvature of your body compared to the wall that's going to be in the background of the photos. And then another really important thing to keep in mind is we're also going to be having uh, the Biomap Augmented Reality Plate. So this is going to be on the ground, this is what you're going to be standing on, and when we go to take the photos, Fourth Element has some very specific standards for how far away the camera needs to be and how high, how high the camera needs to be. As long as in the photos there is a straight line, such as a door frame like this, good contrast with your body compared to the back wall, as well as the photo being able to see all four corners of this augmented reality plate, that is going to allow the biomap algorithm to be able to analyze the photos to help make you your made-to-measure suit. Wow, that sounds very cool. So I think I'll go get changed and then we can get started? Sounds good! Wow, Chris, this fourth element J2 base layer fits really well. Yeah, it looks good. It looks, good. Uh, it looks like a good fit. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do your biomap photo. So I'm going to get you to stand on the AR plate. Uh, one of the first and most important measurements we need to take is your navel height. We want the camera lens to be four inches above the navel or belly button. So if you can just point on your stomach where your navel is. All right, I'm going to stand this guy up. So pretty much 40 inches, so we're going to want the camera lens at 44 inches. Um, camera distance away from you needs to be 11 and a half feet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, have that there. Yeah, if you don't mind holding that with either your foot or your hand, I'm going to stretch this out. Okay, so we need to go to 11 and a half. Which lines up right there. And then as far as height, yep, so you can let go of that. Alright, so next is going to be height. Four, so I need to raise this about an inch. So. Here. The hair color. There we go. So we now have the right height, we have the right distance. So for the first photo, this is going to be the front profile. So I'm going to need you to stand with your feet on the uh, indicated spots on the plate. You're going to stand with your arms at your side. They need to be about 20 centimeters away from your body. Okay? okay? Yep. Just like that. You're going to stand up nice and tall. 
So we're gonna do the first photo. All right, so hands 20 centimeters mm -hmm. apart. Okay, so that's great for the first photo. So now we're gonna get you to rotate. So you're gonna face this direction. All right, we're gonna get you to put your feet on the indicated spot. Yep. So you're gonna stand up nice and tall. You're gonna have your uh, left arm standing again, 20 centimeters away from your body. Mm -hmm. All right. And keep my head pointing. Yep, keep your head facing straight. And then just a normal breath, no need to puff the chest. Perfect, there we go. And just like that, we've taken your two biomap photos. So the next step will be to upload them to the computer and we're gonna go through the fourth element dry suit portal and we're gonna build your suit. Wow, that sounds cool. That was a very fast process. It is, super easy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, Kayla. So I had a moment to review the photos. They look good. So now we're going to actually build your suit. So if you want to take a seat with me, we've logged into the fourth element portal. <clears throat> so one of the first steps that we have to do here is we have to pick which model suit you want to go with. So we talked about there's the Argonaut Flex, there's the Argonaut Stealth, and then the one that we were showing you up front was the Stealth Hybrid. So the Flex has the more flexible material, the Stealth has the more durable material, but again, the Hybrid gives you that uh, kind of combo option where it gives you the more durable torso, but the more flexible legs. Which model do you think you would like to go with? I'm probably going to go with the Stealth Hybrid model. The Stealth Hybrid, it perfect. Like All right, so we're gonna both. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to select this. Go ahead. Okay, so that finishes step one. So the next we have to talk about here is the wrist seal option. So you can go with a standard glued on latex, you can go with the neoprene wrist seal, or you can use their ellipse system, which is the user changeable seals with the silicone wrist seal. Which method would you like to go with? I want to do the ellipse seal. Perfect, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna select those. Okay. Um, will you be using it with dry gloves? Yes, I okay, will. Okay, so we're gonna add the ellipse dry glove attachments as well. And um, you, I will need gloves. With you it. will need gloves. Do you have? Um, do you want to use the fourth element textured gloves, or did you have a preference of like a PVC or a um, a, a different type of latex glove that you wanted to use? Um, I'm good with going with the, Go fourth, with the fourth element. Elements? Sure. Oh. All right. So we've selected size small for your dry gloves. Um, regarding the glove liner. Fourth Element has either their G1 glove liners or they also have their Zero Therm glove liners. Um, did you have a preference of which model to um, go with? I didn't have a preference. I didn't know if having the liners would make the dry gloves too bulky. No, I would probably recommend using the Zero Therm um, okay. dry glove liner. It's a fleece. It's a it's a thin fleece glove that uh, will slide in and out pretty easy. Um, and you can also double it up for colder environments as well. So I'll select that one for now. Uh, regarding your neck seal, uh, you can go either standard latex, which is glued in, you can go neoprene, which is also glued in, or you can do the SciTech ring, neck ring system, which uses the silicone seal. I think I'm going to do the silicone one. Perfect. Okay. And again, that gives you the user changeable seal. So if you're on this expedition, you're in a remote area, if you were to rip the seal, as long as you have backups with you in your toolbox, you're able to swap that out accordingly. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding your inflation and exhaust valves, would you like to go with the SciTech or the Apex? Technically, the Apex are a little bit more low profile, so it does make it a bit easier to slide mm -hmm. in and out of your gear. Both inflators are going to use the same style inflation hose, um, so it really is up to you. I want the SciTech one. The SciTech one? Sure. So we'll get you in that one there. Step three. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, for step three, the next thing we're going to do is talk about the boot options. So you've got the standard boot, the tech boot, or the compressed neoprene sock that you would wear with an external rock boot. Which method mm -hmm. of boot would you like to go with? Uh, the compressed neoprene sock. Okay, so we're going to select that. Uh, regarding size, I'm going to go grab some fourth element boots for you to try on some uh -huh. uh, boots. So this way we can figure out what size you are with their brand. Great. All right, uh, your suit does come with a hood. Um, so you have the choice of a 3 mil, 5 mil, mm -hmm. 7 mil hood. Um, the 3, 5, and 7s are straight neck, but you can also get the 7 millimeter cold water hood, which has the bib. Uh, mm -hmm. The fourth element suit does have a warm neck collar that you can tuck in, that extra material. Um, so I would probably recommend going with the bibbed hood because mm -hmm. it will help your neck feel a bit warmer. Um, but it's up to you. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to want the extra warm. Okay, so we'll go with that guy there. All right, uh, uh, the next option is pocket. So this yeah. suit does come standard with two pockets, both on, mm -hmm. both on the left and the right, um, but you can actually request it as to have only one pocket on each side. Uh, would you like to go with both pockets? Yeah, Correct. pockets are always useful. Yes, pockets are always useful. Um, P-valve, would you like to add a P-valve? This can be added later on, um, or it can come from the factory. Um, I don't think I'm wanting a P-valve at Pass the moment. Pass it for now, no yeah. worries. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next step. Um, so this is where we start to actually enter in the photos and your personal information. Height in centimeters. All right, so we're gonna grab the tape measure. We're gonna stand against the wall again. 
Seat against the wall. Okay. Yep, stand there for me. Um, all right, if you turn around, I'm going to get you to hold this against the wall right there. Yep, you can turn around. And if you step back for a second, mm -hmm. down. All right. So you are 170 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'll write down 170. Um, how much do you weigh roughly? 130. Uh, in pounds, and then so 130. So you're looking at 58.96 kilograms. 96. Next. Um, so this is where we get to put okay. in your information. So this is a new customer. Um, so I'm going to pass this over to you and let you go through and put in all your information. Control and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay. okay, so final step is to submit order. And boom, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Your order has been successfully placed. Your new dry suit is now mm -hmm. on the way. Do you have any questions for me? No, Chris. Thank you so much for all this help. You have been really great all day and like you've given me so much information. No worries thank at all. Thank you for helping me to You picked a great this. suit. As mentioned, I this is the same suit I dug myself as well. So mm -hmm. you'll uh, you'll experience a lot of uh, really great dives. Yeah. Now I just suit. have to wait for it to come in. Sure.